Welcome to the Entrepreneurship Talk with MSN. I am your host, Mrs. Simon Lobo. Uh, I am very excited today in this episode to be joined by uh, Uliat Madinani, who is the Chief Creative Officer at SIGA Creative Agency. They are responsible for dealing with marketing management and brand communication. Thank you so much, Liat, for being with us today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Sisi, and thank you for having me. Uh, great. Um, yeah, I, I was I was struck by your profile on 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 LinkedIn, and you know, since this show is really about profiling entrepreneurs who are doing quite great in their domains. I was like, no, I can't, I can't miss this opportunity. And thank you so much for being with us today. It's only a pleasure. Um, right. So tell us about Isiga Creative Agency. How did it start, and 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 where it's going, and what really prompted you to really start the business? Um, okay, yes, yeah, so the business was established in 2019. Um, it's it's a brand communications and marketing management um, creative agency. So I started the business, I think more than anything, it was just an answer to a calling that I believe I had, um, because I had never really envisioned myself uh, starting a business in the creative space. Um, but when I left university, I worked for a communications company, and that's when uh, the marketing bug got me. So I then did a postgraduate diploma in marketing, and I also did a course with Vega in brand communications. So after just all that educational knowledge, I thought that I wanted to create something um, of my own, and um, I was then given an opportunity to work for an NPO and through the NPO uh, in the process of trying to find different donors and sponsors for the NPO, I met a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Prashin Maharaj. So um, through our robust discussions, um, he then challenged me to assist him with um, corporate identity as they were basically changing the entire CI for the South African shipyard. So um, the transition from the South African shipyard to Sandok also was also the transition of me being an ordinary employee to um, a full-time business owner. So taking that opportunity with them, uh, they presented to me work. Um, and I never looked back from that point. This so tell me about the, um, the, the, the communications. What do you guys really deal with in communications? When someone says the company deals with communications, what is really a, a, a day-to-day -day, task or responsibility? Okay, so I think more than anything, we regard ourselves as uh, brand communicators and marketing managers. So what we essentially do is we firstly identify the message. Um, so this would be um, fully understanding the vision um, and the mission of the organization. Um, then we find a way to best communicate that to the desired target audience. Um, so this is uh, from copy um, all the way through the strategy, um, the design in terms of the packaging, um, and then uh, PR and uh, social media in terms of uh, digital um, communication of putting it out there. So um, that's essentially um, just an umbrella feel of what it is that we do. But obviously the mediums are they, they endless. You know, there's radio, there's television. Some, unfortunately, we have not tapped into due to the size and um, the nature of our clients. However, when it comes to communication, it's just really taking the client's message and sending it out to their desired target audience. Um, yeah, no, it's fascinating because uh, I always, you know, like look at the, the communications and PR. My significant other is also in PR, so I, I always try to ask these kind of questions because I do want to you know, understand it and challenge it in terms of what is happening in the industry. So yeah. 
And then the challenges that you have faced in starting your business. I know starting a business, you know, it always comes with a pressure and a lot of uh, problems, especially us as startups. You know, we face so many problems. One of the problems that I particularly face in my business when I started in 2000 and formally 2017, but I, I started in 14, 2014, I had a problem with uh, resources, uh, computers, uh, space, and to find the right people who would carry the goal of this business. That was the problem that I so from your side, can you relate to these goals or, or, or these problems? What are the problems that you have found, you know, in the journey of starting your business? Sure, a lot, to be honest. Um, however, so I think with me, the, the first thing that um, makes me look at challenges differently is that one of the core reasons that I went full on into my business was because of an opportunity. So very early on in my business, I I, I, will, I saw a market, you know, um, and I was basically uh, triggered by that market to pursue my, my business venture. However, um, in the process of that, I think one was talent. Um, one of the first key challenges that I identified was talent. Um, in the creative space, um, your, your cost of sales or your or your key resource are the creators. So getting the right talent, um, talent that is ambitious, not only just skilled in what they do, because you can get a designer and you can get a marketing strategist, um, but um, the person can know how to do the work in terms of their academic background and just their experience, but the will and um, the ambition and the entrepreneurial um, skills as well. So I found that um, recruitment was one of my greatest challenge, um, finding the fine balance between outsourcing and freelancers and owning some of the talent and making sure that it's truly aligned to the vision of the company and it's people that can go through high and low for the business. Um, as you said, I think um, another element were things like equipment, working equipment, um, access to, to internet, Wi-Fi, the softwares and the programs that we use. But I think um, then the, the challenge was not in the actual things because honestly speaking, if you have a business, the business makes money. And when the business makes money, you have to invest the money back into the business. But it's also the discipline to do that, right? Um, and the availability of cash flow in order for you to be able to do that. So those are also some of the challenges that I, I found and I faced. Um, and just the personal challenges and really... Um, understanding that most of the time, even now, you have to put yourself last as a business owner. You have to prioritize your employees. You have to prioritize the clients. You have to prioritize rental, Wi-Fi, telephone costs. And some of the times, if not most, and for myself, all of the time, you find that by the time you get an opportunity to then look at yourself, the business doesn't have money. Um, and it's just the, the patience and the discipline to understand that I might not be pulling a salary for a full year, but you know, once I've built something solid and something that has capacity, then the time will come. So it's the patience um, for that as well. But the, the challenges are endless and I mean, they don't stop, um, <laughs> but it's just, it takes a lot um, for, for you as a person to work on yourself. Um, and always be a solution oriented leader because as a business owner, you make a lot of decisions every day, you know, uh, just by waking up, um, you have to make constant decisions that involve your life, but also involve your business. And you always have to be on your toes and, and trust yourself that you are making the right decisions, even if sometimes they might not always be the right decisions, but always be open to growth and learning. Those are, those are the things that I, I, I talk about in the book. There's a book that is coming out this year. I'm writing a book and I'm looking exactly everything that you have actually mentioned here to say, you know, I'm look, the book is about why businesses fail. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the 360 issues that businesses come across. And, mm -hmm. you know, the skill 
is always one of the things that comes comes up when I when I'm doing my research, my research and resources. You know, I've never I've never really understood how difficult it is to find the right people who would carry the, the, the you know to carry the the, the, the objectives and and, and, and goals of the business until I, I employed people. And I started to appreciate what uh, this guy Gary V says. He says, uh, em, em, you need to work double the amount, uh, the effort of your employees. So all the time you must be ahead of your employees because you are carrying the vision. That's the truth. You are carrying the vision. You know where you're taking this ship. So it, it's always you who's supposed to be upfront in everything that you are doing. And I find it to be very true now that I am running this business. And these are really challenges that I'm facing. And at the time, as you are saying, you don't have the salary for yourself, but you have to pay people, right? Mm. So yeah, it's quite challenging. Um, Right, so, and then the books that you have read that have molded you to start your business and and to, to make it to be what it is today, what are those books? Where where are your sources? We want to know your sources. <laughs> sure, yes. I think one is um, you, well, um, I'd like to believe that to be a successful entrepreneur and to grow in business, you need to read aggressively consistently. Um, I read a lot, like I'm a Robert reader, um, and, I, and I'm also very intentional in reading business books. So I read a book a month minimum, um, and sometimes you find that obviously if it's a, book, a good book, you finish it in like a week or two, and then you start another book. But um, just to share for the last two months, I've been reading um, business books, and the books that I've been reading are Pavlo Petiti's books. So Pablo Petides is a, he's a South African entrepreneur and he writes a lot on entrepreneurship in South Africa. So he ha he currently has only two books. Uh, one I read in January, the other I read in Feb. Um, it's Scale, Scale, Sell. Mm, I think I'm forgetting the name of the book, but it's by Pablo Petides. The second one is Restart, Reignite and Reset. Reset, Restart, Re Reignite. Um, but essentially his work is really on just how one can build an asset of value business. And he speaks of the principles in, in building a business that is an asset um, and building a business that you can one day sell uh, because he claims or he believes that there are two destinations for a business. It's either a business is going to fail or a business is going to sell. Um, how do you then build a business that is worth selling and how do you build a business that you can actually put a price tag on and that speaks to just the power of building sustainable businesses you know because there are different types of entrepreneurs um you find your lifestyle entrepreneurs you find your growth entrepreneurs and people argue that there's a huge difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner however i just like his philosophy in saying that when all is said and done whatever it is that you're building you have to first identify the problem, create a model around build, solving that problem. So he speaks a lot on systems and structures, and this is something that is one of the reasons most businesses fail because they are not proper systems and, and structures in place. Um, the importance of just having a standard um, operating procedure in your business. Um, so I, I love reading a lot of business books, but I also read a lot of self-help books as well self-help in the sense of just building myself as a person um i'm a very huge fan of oprah winfrey so i read a lot of her books but also just books that she endorses so i'm a very spiritual person so i read um, a lot of spiritual books as well your Eckhart Tolle books um your elizabeth Gilbert books and brene brown so speaking on just vulnerability um and just love and and all these elements that are needed for you to be an empathetic leader. So, um, yeah, I read a lot. I think if I were to talk about books, we'd have to have a session, like a separate session, just talking about books. And um, But I, I'm quite an avid reader, and I encourage people to read, especially entrepreneurs and just everyone, young people. Um, reading is very important because it exposes you to the world, and 
it also just in, exposes you to just context and perspective and just how to 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 navigate uh, yourself in this world. You know, I started a book club. Uh, I think a month or a month ago. Uh, and I, cause I read a lot of a lot of books myself. I, I, you know, I've come to a point that I'm like, why people aren't talking about books? Why, where is that community of people who are just mm-hmm. sharing information and and all these wonderful ideas and knowledge that they are getting from the books? And I was like, no man, I need to come up with something. I did this because, you know, at times I, I, at, I get to be invited at Bukose FM to share books and all of that. And I was like, but there are not, long, there are not too many people who go there, you know, to, to discuss this. And I was like, no, let me do this. Let me, let me, let me, put, let me put two people together to talk about, to talk about books. Because another thing that I found when I was, you know, doing some research before I even uh, writing the book, I was looking at how is the readership in Africa as a whole and in South Africa. The, the readership mm. is not really pleasing here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very low. So mm. those are the reasons why I actually started a book club. And thank you so much for sharing that because you are now motivating someone who who also wants to start reading, but maybe they wanted a source of motivation somewhere. But thank you so mm. much for that. And then the people that you look up to, who are the people that like mold you to be the person that you are? Um, oh, okay. Um, well, firstly, I'm very centered in my spirituality. So, um, I do, I strongly believe that God is the chairperson of the organization because, you know, even in hard times, um, I, that's the person I consult. <laughs> um, I also look up to my family, um, I, I'm, I'm raised by a single mother, so I'm very rooted in in just the values and the sacrifices that my mom has made for myself and my two younger sisters. So um, I think she's one of my greatest inspirations because I know that I have to make it so that I can thank her properly. So um, I look up to her a lot. Um, I also look up to just women, um, women that have done amazing things both internationally and um, locally. I obviously my greatest inspiration is Oprah Winfrey. I'm deeply inspired by her. Um, I listen to her work. I read a lot of her books, and um, she just she serves as my voice of wisdom and reason. Um, but I'm also inspired by a lot of other women's books that I read. As I explained, I read a lot of Marianne Williamson books. I read Elizabeth Holbert books. I read Brene Brown books. Um, so I love their work and I find just different nuggets of inspiration um, in just how they've, they've lived their lives and just how they speak on their work and try and change the, the world through their work. But I'm also inspired by women in South Africa, uh, women in business, you know, like your putis, uh, just the amazing work that they do in corporate South Africa. Um, as much as one is an SMME, but, you know, just seeing women climb up the ranks in corporate is very inspiring. Um, I am also very inspired by just my mentors, uh, women that are around me um, that serve as my mentors and um, running small businesses um, in and around me. Um, But I think I'm just, more than anything, I would also say I draw much inspiration for myself. You know, I'm very proud of Um, the journey that I've had and um, I think I'm also in constant communication with the woman inside of me and who she wants to become so she puts a lot of pressure on me so um, I'm inspired by her and um, and I think every day I wake up trying to resemble her even more in becoming more of myself. I, I, I thought I'm crazy when I'm talking to myself every day so I'm happy that we have that voice inside us. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like my voice. I'm like, you are a perfectionist woman. Calm down. Like, give me a chance. I'm trying. 
this and and this voice it 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 very it, it's very selfish it doesn't want you to do all these crazy things it tells you exactly what to do and you have to follow it because it's always right 99% of the time it's it's right very um, true it's yeah. most likely always right <laughs> <laughs> now tell me um what do you think about the entrepreneurship landscape in South Africa? Do you see a growth? Do you see that there is something that needs to be done? You know, I'm, I'm saying this because uh, I've written so many guides on how to start businesses. And I've, I've you know, these, these talks, I started them long time ago. In fact, before I formalized them like this, I used to just sit in front of the camera and just give people information. But for some reason, I don't know whether people are afraid of starting businesses. They want to start with having a job and then start a business mm. or what is happening. But I feel like there is a fear. So I don't know. I, I just want to get your perspective on that. Yeah, um, you know, I share very deep sentiments on, on what you just asked um, because I'm one of the entrepreneurs that didn't start off in trying to build a career before I, I went the entrepreneurial route. Uh, so much that when I was starting out my business, because I'd only been working for a year, I was actually told that um, by someone who was close to me at the time that I was committing a career suicide. Yeah. And you do get people who would discourage you, right? Uh, I think, to be honest, Entrepreneurship, I believe, is the solution, the solution to this big monster that we're all aware of, which is unemployment in our country, especially for the youth. Um, the numbers are scary, very disappointing. Um, but I believe that the people that hold the solution to that are entrepreneurs, because, I mean, entrepreneurs are the ones that are creating jobs um, in this country, uh, in particular South Africa. So. However, I do feel that um, it's a responsibility not only for our government, um, not only for our leaders in terms of people that have been in entrepreneur, entrepreneurship before us, um, but it's a responsibility for all of us. And by all of us, I mean us, the SMMEs, um, the people at large to support the SMMEs um, and the young people that are looking for jobs to equip themselves to be deserving of, of opportunities in the SME space, right? Um, however, I think it's just also important to then, when I think about it in my personal life and how it relates to me, I take a step back and in, in looking in just the trajectory of just entrepreneurship and its own. Um, we grew up in a community where um, security was characterized by having a job a job in the state, in a certain department, a job in a big corporate. Um, and that was what security was for us, right? Um, and then we find ourselves in a space where entrepreneurship starts becoming a buzzword. Um, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, hustle, um, hustlers movement, et cetera, et cetera. However, I think then another element that comes in where people cannot find employment and then they, they create start businesses um, to make ends meet, which is amazing, phenomenal. Um, you find people that get retrenched and then they start businesses. Um, and that's great, that's amazing. I support that deeply because it's important for one to go out there and make means for themselves. Um, however, I do feel like a part of it dilutes the entire phenomenon um, of entrepreneurship, right? where we end up moving away from what it truly means to build a business and the principles um, and the steps that are needed in building a business, right? Um, so, and then there comes an element of the lack of support thereof, right? Um, in terms of just um, the platforms that, are, that, are, that should be available to equip and support entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, uh, the platforms that should be available in terms of access to resources, access to, to funding, access to markets for entrepreneurs. So I feel like there's still so much that needs to be done 
um, I'm not going to even tap into then the lack of transformation and just the tapping into certain spaces, the red tapes and and the glass ceiling and the gender element, the lack of equality and, and you know, representation in spaces. But I think just to start at the beginning, it is the element of having platforms like this uh, where you get to hear other entrepreneurs who are on the journey uh, that make you and allow you to redefine what entrepreneurship is for you as a person. Because entrepreneurship varies from people to people. However, a business and a business model is exactly the same. How a business is built is on a model and the model does not change. You know, it can be adjusted to speak to the type of business that you're running, but the model is exactly the same. We need to talk about the model. We need to talk about sustainability. We need to talk about access to markets. We need to talk about these resources. We need to basically equip entrepreneurs, not by giving them money, but giving them the skills, right? And just the mindset, the will, and the desire. And then and also preparing them for the money so that they can have structures and processes in place. So there's a long way to go, uh, but I think it's high time that we also move away from the blame game, um, the, the entitlement game, uh, because NYCA is not going to give you money because you are mad that NYCA has not responded to your application. NYCA is going to give you money because your application meets the requirements, because your business is compliant, because you are solving a problem and you can show why you need the money and how you're going to use the money. So it's high time that we now look into why do you need the money um, and how will you use the money and um, are you compliant? What is your model? Are your financials in place? You know, um, do you have, you input people, do you have contracts, do you have a payroll in place? Uh, so we need platforms like that uh, to prepare us for that finance readiness. And I think that is a responsibility that is nobody's responsibility, but if we take the responsibility ourselves, then people will be forced to help us because people want to move with the moving train. So I think that's where we at, but there is definitely a long way to go. And there are a lot of unfair things happening in this space, but I think we should not focus on the unfair things, but we try and find solutions to those. And that's why we entrepreneurs, we find solutions to problems. Um, yes. No, thank you so much. I think I think even myself, I, I, I share the same thing with what you're saying. Uh, entrepreneurship, leadership, and financial literacy should start from school, from high school. In fact, way back even as from grade six, seven, you need to start talking to students about starting businesses, about you know, being leaders, being responsible. Um, you need to talk to people, uh, to students of, or learners about money. So this thing is a systemic issue. It, it, education has something to do it with it. Policies has something to do with it. Our leaders have something to do with it. Like there's so much that is happening that is not talking to one another. So I think that's where we are stuck. That, that's my perspective. So, yeah, but no, you, you have said it very correctly that there's so many things that needs to be sorted and let's rather not focus on the negatives and, and, and try to capacitate people and, you know, and build moving businesses. Um, Lieta, in closing, uh, what would you uh, say to someone who wants to start a business? Um, the fact that they want to start a business is all I just need to reassure. The fact that you want to start a business is a gift. Um, the desire, uh, the vision being planted in your heart um, is a gift. Uh, it is your responsibility to own, honor that. Um, do your research thoroughly um, and equip yourself, you know, capacitate yourself. I like the word that you use there, capacitate yourself. 
there's a lot of opportunities out there. You know, I'll speak for myself. I'm in a program with uh, Race Corp, um, which is an accelerator for success for, for SMEs. Um, I've been on a program with uh, the Black Umbrellas. Um, I learned a lot on those programs. Um, with, I'm on a program with um, an incubator called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Um, the opportunities are, are there. Sometimes we also have to dismantle this belief that opportunities for SMEs come in a form of funding. Sometimes opportunities come in a form of equipping you for funding. Um, and it's important for us to, to be aware of that and, and, and take charge of those opportunities. So do your research and, and also look up to people in your industry. Look at what they're doing right. Look at what you wish they would be doing differently and do that. Um, right, but I think more than anything, it would be honoring the call to start, understanding that it is a serious responsibility, um, and just following through and never giving up. It's it's not like a, it's not like a nine to five job, eh? No, definitely not. <laughs> You'll have sixteen hour working days, and you just have to also understand that you're gonna work on weekends. Um, sometimes you have a full working day on a weekend and that should just be okay. <laughs> you know, the entrepreneurship teaches you that you actually don't have this cut. Every time you wake up, you grab a laptop and then you work. You grab a phone and then you make some calls. Like when you're on a cut, majority, when the one or two and three, you just, it's, it's just work, work, work. And, a lot of responsibilities. True, very true. Yeah. So, can you please uh, give us your your contact details where people can find you, and if they want to do business with you, uh, can you please share your your socials as well as the numbers, and maybe the location as well. Okay. So, um, I'm personally on LinkedIn on my personal capacity, and um, I'm Liet. Madinane. I'm also on Instagram, although I'm not a big fan of the application, but I'm also Liet school Madinane. Um, the company is Speaker Creative Agency. Uh, my email is Liet, which is L I A T, at Speaker Creative Agency. Um, and our telephone number is 031 012 5079. Our offices are, um, we recently moved into a new office actually this month and it's on 15 Berrydale uh, Road, uh, Musgrave. Um, yes, so uh, the company is also on LinkedIn and Instagram and it's Speaker Creative Agency. On Instagram it's at Speaker underscore Creative underscore Agency. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I will also put them in the description below. Uh, both on, on, on the podcast and on YouTube. So thank you so much, uh, Liata, for, for being with us, for honoring us with your time. I know entrepreneurs are very busy people and it's very difficult to get their time, but thank you so much for sharing your expertise, your experience uh, and your journey. So that really means a lot to us. And yeah, I mean, as we are trying to uh, to create this ecosystem as we are trying to help people as you are rightfully saying it that there's so much that needs to be done such initiatives mm -hmm. that we are, we are trying to do right now are the ones that are the building blocks to you know to the end product so thank you so much for joining us today thank you thank you very much for the invite and enjoy the rest of your day no oh, thank you so much Nyabo.